All right, today, Sunday, I took the day off, man. I just couldn't deal with it today. I wanted to do some work on this 99 Dodge van. Getting ready to sell it. We're gonna put it up on Facebook and whatever and get rid of it. But it runs and drives. I put about 50, 100 miles on it now. It's a pretty good old van. If I was gonna keep it, I'd put some, definitely put some tires under it and I'd put some shocks under it. That's the main thing it needs, but I'm gonna go ahead and tune it up. And that's what we're doing today here. I've already taken the dog house off. This is what we call the dog house, which is real easy. This one here just unsnapped right here. And this has got the little V6 in it. Now I've already taken the cap off loose. I wanted to show you. I'm gonna show you a trick on this cap here later. See if we can get to zoom in. I don't know if that shows up on the camera, but you see the white lines on it? That's all garbage. Now you can clean that cap up. Uh, screwdriver, scrape it off, sandpaper, sand it down, make it look clean, and it'll probably be just fine. But you know, I was going. I went up to the hard, I mean, auto parts store, got parts for it, and I went and got plugs and a cap and rotor. I spent I think 25 bucks on it. I didn't buy wires. The wires look good enough, and I'm not spending 45, 50 dollars on a set of wires. Not when I'm getting ready to sell the vehicle. And can you believe how much oil has went up? I was going to change the oil myself, and by the time it was all said and done, I was going to spend close to 40 dollars just to do an oil change. Hell with that, I'll take it to Valvoline and let Valvoline have it. Spend 40 bucks and let them have it and I won't have to worry about getting rid of the oil or nothing. Anyway, these are the plugs I got for it. I got them all lined up here. Uh, we'll come over here. We're going to do this with a few hand tools so anybody can do this, okay? Now, Riley's on their computer says the gap plugs at 40, 40, zero, I mean, point zero, um, point zero four oh. If you guys, if, if she, anyway, uh, what they were saying is, uh, is point zero forty. All you need is a little feeler gauge. That's what this thing right here is. Get my camera to come in there. Put it down there. Anyway, and it starts here at zero and works its way around. Now they say these plugs are already pre-gapped. Don't ever believe that they're not. I've already pre-gapped the other ones, but it's real simple to do. So I'm gonna get this camera here to focus. Anyway, you just take your little gauge right here, put it over on the zero, run it across here. We can see that. Anyway, this one here stopped at 30 degrees. That's all you do. So to get it to go farther, just kind of lift up on it a little bit, pry it up, work it over. Pry it up, work it over. Till you get to 40. That's all you got to do. And anymore, if you're going to change the plugs out of your car, always put anises on these plugs. Always. I got this bottle here because you know I'm always doing tune up. So I got this. This was like five or ten dollars. But this thing here will last you forever. Now you can buy them at the store, just little video packs for like 99 cents. One pack could do all these, but I got this stuff here. Now I put them on here just to be on the safe side. Some cars call for it, some don't, but I mean it ain't gotta be real thick. But I like to do all this prep work before I even get started. You see how well that stuff goes, man. It just goes. This stuff helps seed st uh, plugs into the block, I mean, into the head. That's what it's good for. And it doesn't let air pass. It's all said and done. And that's all there is to it. Anyway, when I do an oil change and stuff, tune-ups, I like to do prep work and get everything ready so that way I ain't got to be jacking with it. 
Put my feeler gauge back up. Ugh. And I'll show you a trick how to do the stripper cap. Because if you're not a mechanic, and you really don't know your wiring, you could get messed up pretty easy. I learned a trick a long time ago. We're doing that. There's my cap. And here's my rotor. Like I said, we're just doing this with a few basic hand tools. That way you guys know what's going on with it. Oh. Let me get my cap out of here. Anyway, like I said, I spent, I think it was 20 some dollars. I spent 20, 25 dollars on cap, rotor, and plugs. There's cap. Come on, rotor. This is your rotor. Okay, the cap's off. What I do is I just lay that over out of the way. Sometimes these rotors come off, sometimes they don't. Sometimes you gotta give them an attitude adjustment. This has been on here a while. And if it's stuck on there, you know it's been a while. I only got my other pliers here. These are my favorite pliers. Anyway, just do a little pry up and it'll come off. There it is. Now, if it's been on a while, it ain't coming off, so that tells you. If you look down in there, I don't know if you can see down in there. See the little thing sticking out inside there? There's a groove. Anyway, and it goes right here on top of that groove. It goes right down here like a car key. So there's no way you can't put this on the right way. Just push it down until it stops, spin it, push it down a little farther. And that's all you gotta do. And she's on. Now the trick I was gonna show you guys with this cap. Okay, here's the old cap. I'm leaving all the wires on. I'm not taking no wires off just yet. Now if you see this little black thing right here, it's going to right here, it's the black thing right here on this one, okay? So I'm just gonna put this on exactly how that one came off. I know this is kind of routine, you know, for somebody who's been working on cars all their life. You probably think this is kind of stupid doing this, but I'm doing this to show people that it can be done, even if you ain't got no mechanical experience. Now the cap on it goes on, on there, it will only, when it sits down, you know what's on there. And you'll feel it. Take the screwdriver. Now don't crank this all the way down. You want to make sure you get both sides started. Because you know, this rotor cap, this stripper cap is just plastic and it will break real easy. I mean, it don't cost much, but why spend the extra money and fix it, you'll buy another one. One side at a time, down snug. Come back over here. Snug down this side. I mean, it don't need to be much more than finger tight, you know. I'm just using my fingers here. I ain't trying to crank on it. Okay, that's down. See, cap ain't moving. I'm wiggling on it. It's good to go. A lot of caps that you get. I don't know if I can get this to focus in. This camera ain't that good. See right here, it says number one. That's your number one plug. That's where number one plug wire goes to. A lot of caps don't have that, but you know, what can you say? This one does. Now the easiest way to do this is set your cap up like this here, right? And the way to do this, I ain't got my tripod. Let's pull one off. Let's set this down here so I can. Anyway, as you see, there's a cap. I pulled off this plug wire right here and just set it right here. Just transplant it. That's the easiest way to do this. I'm not gonna lie to you. That way you'll never have to worry about it. Let me pull off this other one. See how I got that one off? And it just goes right here in this place. 
Make sure they snap and they go on. It's down. That way you don't have to worry about it. And just keep working your way. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me get the camera down here. Just keep working your way around the cap. And putting them on this cap the exact same way you take off. So I'll take off number three. Why? No, that's not number three to the plug. But I'm just calling it number three off the cap. There's the next one coming off. I'm just going to transplant it straight up to here. Make sure she snaps on. I'm going to go over here. Sometimes you got to wiggle these things and pull up on them at the same time to get them off. Just be careful with them. You don't want to rip them and break them. So then you will be buying plug wires. And plug wires are about $40, $50. And then I'm not buying plug wires. Not for a vehicle I'm not keeping. Take off the other one. Route it up here to this one here. And same way here. And you just went around it black just like it was. There you go. That's your cap and wires. And rotor. It's on. Sorry, I'm having a hard time here. I'm sweating like a dog in this van. It's about 100, probably about 98, 99 degrees in this van right now. Okay, and we're going to go on over here. Get down on my hands and knees here. I'm going to take out the first plug that comes to us, which is that bad boy right there. That's the one we're going to take out. Like I said, I'm just doing this. If you know me, I love air packs, air ratchets, air tools. Anything air, I'm all for it. But in a tight space like this, it's just not worth it. Go ahead and pull your plug wire off. Like so. Ratchet in your socket. We're using a 5 8 spark plug ratchet. Give it a little kick on it. I'm gonna pull the plug out of her. Long winded thing, too. And there's a the spark plug. As you can see, that plug is not bad at all. But I don't know the vehicle, so that's why I'm changing it. And we're just going to set this over to the side. We're going to throw it in this old box here to keep track of them. And my plug wires that I already got pre-glued up. I'm going to bring that over here. These ones get difficult. These got these little heat shields on them, which I can't stand. That's this thing right here. They're a pain in the butt. The best way to do this is just drop the plug in there. Put your spark plug socket down in there. Nothing fancy, just turn it real slow. And if she turns in there pretty good ways, before it gets tight, then you know it's not cross-threaded. Don't try using your ratchet and running it down in there because it's going to cross-thread every time. Just do it by hand, slow and go. Okay, it's tight. Now you don't want to put a whole lot of torque on this. It's going to go down snug when it stops. Okay, it stopped right there. About another quarter turn. That's all you want to do. Put the plug wire back up in there where it's supposed to be. Put it down in there. And I pulled too much out. Okay, pull it back down in there. Put it over the plug. And you'll feel it snap on. When you feel it snap on, good to go. Now on to the next one. These are my favorite pliers. I've had many pliers over my life, but these have got these little beveled edge on it here with their tin up. Just grab a hold of stuff. And just pry up. And I just love these things. There's that one. Now see, the farther you get up in here, the more pain in the butt this is going to be. 
the reason I wanted to show you this is because I actually called a couple uh, mechanic shops, right? Well, that's not even going to let me. Let's see if this works. Put that in there. It's fine. You got to do one at a time. Anyway, they're crazy. The cheapest one I found to do this was $400. These people are nuts. Anybody with a few tools can do this job. Okay, maybe I can't. <laughs> maybe I don't know how. Let me see, I can go get my, I gotta go get my extension. Sorry about that, I had to go get a lower extension. That big extension I had was just too big for what I was trying to do here. <sighs> too big, too small, too long, you know, there's always something with these things. <sighs> Doesn't, uh, how you saw me, I just dropped that extension, that's gonna happen. <sighs> Try to get that thing out of there by hand. Sometimes they can be a pain in the butt, man. They, you know, working on cars ain't easy. I'm finally getting it worked out here. I still haven't gotten in and got my extension yet. See that plug there ain't too bad either. I mean, I didn't have to change the plugs like I said, but I just want to know from my own, my own deal, you know? I don't want to sell nobody nothing that's going to be junk, you know? I don't want to be known as that kind of guy. I like for everybody to know when they get something from me, it's running and driving as best I can make it. See all the oil on this motor, man. It needs wild cover gaskets. But I'm not doing it. They can have whoever they want to do that. Okay, I got that plug in there. It was kind of a pain in the butt. But I wanted to show you a trick here, okay? It's not the end of the world. Sometimes when you pull these plug wires out, you pull the end off of it. It's not that big of a thing, okay? Here's the end hood. It's real simple, real easy to fix, okay? Just open it up a little bit. All you gotta do, spread the things just a little bit until you can get this hose in there. I mean, this wire in here is all you gotta do. Keep working a little bit, you'll get it open. Sorry, it's kind of hard to do this in film too. I'm trying to show you how to do this. So bear with me. Let's get some to hold on to it. You just want to open it up a little bit. All you're doing is opening it. So you get it open. Let's see here. Clean that end up a little bit. Let me find it. It's kind of hard to tell, but right there is the wire. Right there by my fingernail. So when you put it back in here, just put it down where it's on the metal. That simple, that easy. Just put it back on there. Take your pliers, crimp it back on. And that's all you do. Now you just fixed your wire. See, it ain't going nowhere. And push it, pull the wire back through, and you'll feel it kind of snap in place in the boot. And that's it. Now I've already got that second plug in. Now I gotta get that first plug. Get a hand in here. Try to turn this thing out by hand. There's not much room in here. That's the only but downfall. There just ain't much room in here. I don't think that plug's been out for a while. They just don't want to come out. This number one plug here, I don't know if this is number one or not, but first plug in the block has fought me the whole way. 
He just does not want to come out. They come out. Oh, they come out with it. Yeah, see that plug don't look bad either. Huh. Yeah, that's good then. Reach over here and grab one of my extra ones over here I got in the pile. Let's sit down in there. <sighs> see, I wanted to show you this side because this side is the hardest side to do. The driver's side is always the hardest on these vans. Let me show you over here. This is the passenger side. It's all easy. See, look, whole lot of room here to get to everything you need to do on the passenger side. But I don't know why they did it. But it's not that way on the driver's side. All right, let me tighten okay. this down. As you can see, the driver's side is completed. They're all in here. We get time to look over the motor and see if we see any loose wires or anything, but this one doesn't look like anybody's actually fooled with it. Sometimes you get in here and these things will be all molested. Where people just got in here and rigged all kinds of stuff up. And see the other thing that makes the driver's side difficult is you got the seat here. You got steering wheel hills here so you can either lay in across here or be here where I am at in the path. But now the passenger side what makes it easier, I think, a lot of it. <sighs> is you can just come right in here and kind of rest up on the seat a little bit here and just do it off from right here <sighs> now all actuality tell you the truth that side right here the driver's side is kind of a pain in the butt to do it really is the back plug was pretty easy the second plug up wasn't too bad but the wire broke off and I showed you how to fix that pretty easy but that front one was kind of a booger to get to. It really was a booger to get to and get it done. That side over there, I didn't even, I didn't even record it. The passenger side, I flew through that in about two minutes. I was done. Yeah, probably five, maybe 10, I don't know. But it was quick and easy. Here's all the tools that I use. Phillips screwdriver, a straight screwdriver, another Phillips screwdriver. Because honestly, I didn't know which one would fit in that little the little screw holes for the cap so I brought two of those and a straight screwdriver ratchet couple spark plug socket there's one extension there's another extension and a couple pair of needle nose pliers and there's the plugs like I said they're not bad but you see they're kind of rusted so that tells me it's not been firing right all right let's start it up you know this thing had a little bit of a miss it was vibrating pretty good I mean it ran good it didn't but it was just kind of a miss to it. So here we go. Now this thing hasn't been started yet today because I didn't want to mess with a hot motor. I mean, about to change them in a hot with plugs when they're hot. I tell you, that thing sounds a whole lot better. Sounds like she's firing on all cylinders. Like I said, that side there was a pain in the butt. The dealerships wanted, I mean, mechanic shops wanted to charge you $400 enough to do that. And I'm about saving money. I'm gonna put the doghouse back on it and I'm gonna take it up for Vaveline, let them have it, let them change the fluid, let them change the oil and grease it all up. There is something when you go to the auto parts store though, you gotta be careful about. Here, let me clean one of these up real quick so we can read it real good. Okay. So whoever did this, this, this last time, let me start again. When you go to the auto parts stores, I want spark plugs for this. Some good old champions, AC Delcos will work just fine. You don't need nothing fancy for these motors. These are not high performance motors. You don't need a Platinums and you don't need the NGKs and all the other good stuff. Cause all they're doing is trying to upsell you. 
And if they upsell you, you know, that makes their store look better because they're making money. Like this one here. So I can get in here where you can read it. I don't know if I can get my camera to zoom in on it. But anyway, these are a Bosch Platinum Plugs. And these are probably about three or four dollars, maybe five dollars a piece. There ain't no way I'd spend five dollars a plug on a freaking van like this. Hmm. I spent two dollars and ninety nine cents a plug for them, the cap and rotor, and I think I walked out of there for under twenty five dollars. Now, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and change out the plug wires, but I'm not keeping this van. If I was, I'd go ahead and change out the plug wires. But I got this thing for sale. I'm putting it up on Facebook. And we're going to sell it for about a thousand bucks. I ought to make somebody a good vehicle, man, because I like it. I really do like it. Like I said, I'm going to put the dog house back on it. And we're going to go to Valvoline and get the oil changed. Look, man, we're just cruising down the road. Going out here to Belt and get the oil changed. about 60 right now this thing runs pretty good man i mean don't get me wrong it ain't gonna win no drag racing or nothing somebody took care of this van boy this be a good van for somebody but if you're one of them people that's got as soon as the stoplight turns green and you got to gun the dog out of your vehicle to go somewhere this is not the vehicle for you look no engine lights on nothing Got the windows down here. Let me rub the window a little bit. Look, we're going 60 mile an hour down the road, 65 now. It's quiet in here. I like this old van, man. It's a pretty good old van. We're just cruising. This thing's got a little pep to it, too, boy, because it jump up a little bit. Watch. <laughs> Just a V6 in this van. But hey man, it cruises right along, cruise control works, everything works on except for air conditioning. Air conditioning doesn't work too well. It's got a hole in a line. I mean I could take the lines off and fix it, but I'm not going to. Alright, I'm gonna shut this down. I gotta get some air in here. I roll down some windows. hot out here yeah we're driving a vehicle with no insurance and no illegal tags on it just asking to get pulled over and get some tickets but you know how it goes yeah look we're here at Valvoline like I said I could have changed the oil myself but man I'm not gonna spend forty dollars and do it myself not when I can uh, spend this $40, $40 here. Look, we even got a girl here doing the, doing the work. Look at this. This thing about Valvoline, man. Even a woman can change the oil in a car. I'm just not doing it. Just ain't feasible to go spend the money and do it, you know. Buy the stuff and then got to get rid of it. And then just come to go here and do it here. I get rid of it, it's clean, I ain't got a jack with it. Look, I told you guys I went to our parts store, right? Get oil and oil filter for this thing, that's the one I tuned it up. It's gonna cost me about $30, $40 to do all that, right? Look at this. Get it here, seal it. Location, it's all sealed up. They change the oil, check the oil, tire pressure, brake fluid, power steering fluid, windshield wiper fluid, coolant, transmission fluid. Old, old service indicator light reset, which this one doesn't have one. Damn it, I dropped it. I'm sorry, folks. Dropped it. Anyway, grand total what this cost me. That old saying, it ain't who you know, it's what you know. Anyway, come over here. That's what they tell you. Pow. $21.36. Now, tell me who's wrong for going and getting the oil changed whole lot cheaper I ain't gotta lay on my back to do it I ain't greasy I ain't gonna worry about getting rid of the old oil 
built my stuff right up for $21 and it was gonna cost me almost 40 if I'd done it myself. And this is a good van, dude. I mean, this is a damn good van. Anyway, I'm gonna put a link up to it. Cause like I said, we're gonna put it on Facebook and we're just gonna sell it off. When I get back to the house, I'll give a walk around here on it and give a good video on that and we'll call it a day. Alrighty. Well, I got it tuned up, got the oil changed in it. I figured I'd give you guys a walk around. Another one here. What we have here is a 99 Dodge Ram 1500 with a 3.9 liter in it. I think she's a good looking van. She's got the high step ceilings in it. <sighs> Everything works on it, but the air conditioning doesn't work. It's got a hole in the line. That's what the inside looks like. It's got a good little stereo system in it. Got a TV. DVD player up there, they don't work though. Alrighty. Let's shut these doors up. You saw in the video, I just doing, tuned it up for them, changed the oil in it. The only thing this thing really needs, it needs tires on it bad. If I was keeping it, I'd put tires on it and I'd put shocks on it. And it needs a good cleaning. See, it's pretty dirty. There's another deal up there. <sighs> but in overall, I think she's a good looking van. The only real bad spot on this van is right there. Bubbled up with rust. And that's probably because right there's a gas tank, you know, people putting gas in it, spilling it in there and it just setting. She's a good looking van. Anyway, like I said, we're just asking a thousand bucks for it, so I ain't trying to get rich off the deal. I'm trying to get my money back. All right, thank you guys. Like and subscribe, I appreciate it.